Good morning, mathematicians. Today we're taking a look at a new lesson in our Chapter 5. It's not on your learning journey sheet, but it is an additional lesson that we need to do. It's going to focus on traditional multiplication. Now, just like traditional addition and traditional subtraction, we had said was the mom and dad way, our traditional multiplication is the same. This is the way that when you take your math home and you show them how you do this, it will probably be similar to the way that they learned how to do their math. So our learning target today is I can use traditional multiplication. Let's get started with some mental math and reflexes. The problems are on the board. Please write down on your board the product. When you finish, if you finish early, Show how you know the answer. So what is a way to check that your answer is correct? Go ahead. I'll say the problem, you say the answer. Five times six equals, six times three equals, six times four equals, seven times three equals. One way that we can know that this first problem is right is by checking it with division. We know division and multiplication are opposites. So 30 divided by 6, hmm, when we divide it into 6 parts, it does equal 5, so it's correct. Raise your hand if you can tell us a way that we could check our answer for 6 times 3 equals 18. Right, we could do 18 divided by 3 or divided by 6 equals the opposite number. How about for 6 times 4 equals 24, right? 24 divided by 6 is 24, or is 4, or 24 divided by 4 is 6. Go ahead and try these problems. Same thing. Do the multiplication. If you finish early, show how you would check your answer by doing the opposite of multiplication, which is division. I'll say the problem, you say the answer. 7 times 4 equals, 9 times 8 equals, 8 times 7 equals, and 7 times 7 equals. Let's choose 2 to check. How could I show that 7 times 4 is 28 and 7 times 7 is 49? Right, I could say that 28 divided by 4, if I divide it into 4 groups, I would have 7 in a group, or 49 divided by 7, again, 7 in a group. Please erase your board and get ready for your final set of warm-up problems. I'll say the problem, you say the answer. 6 times 60 equals... 8 times 5 equals, 7 times 9 equals, and 80, 80 times 30 equals. Remember, whenever you have a multiplication problem with a lot of zeros, you should just start with the basic fact. This came up on our math journal pages the other day. We had a really large number. It was something like this. And it had a lot of zeros. It was in the hundred thousands. And then we multiplied by just a single digit. Let's say it's two. What numbers do we really need to multiply together here to find our product? Right, it's the same as doing 492 times two. And then you just count up how many zeros. So keep in mind this shortcut whenever you are doing multiplication. Please erase your board and set that aside. I'll know we're ready to go when I have your hands free and your eyes up on the board. Here is the U.S. traditional multiplication. So it says you can use U.S. traditional multiplication to multiply. Let's see what we did here. So if we're multiplying 963 by 5, or 5 times 963, you set it up just like a regular multiplication problem. Bigger number on top, 
times out front, smaller number equals. Then it says multiply the ones. So five times three ones equals 15 ones, which is 110 and five ones. You write the five in the ones place below the line and carry the one to the six. So three times five is 15, put down the five, carry the one. Step two, multiply the tens. Five times six tens is 30 tens. Remember the one up top, so we add that. So we have 30 tens plus one ten equals 31 tens in all. 31 tens is 301 ten. So 60 times five is 300 plus one ten is 310. We put the one down, carry the three. And step three, you multiply the hundreds. So we have 900 times five. Well, I know nine times five is 45 plus three is 48. So from that, we know for sure that five times 963 is 4,815. We're gonna try that with four sample problems that came right from your math reference book again. We're gonna try the one that you think looks the most difficult. So which one up on the board has the most digits on it? Right, number three. So let's give that one a try below. So we have 1,808 times seven equals. So step one, we start in the ones place. Eight times seven is 56. Put the six down and carry the five. Seven times zero is zero. Zero plus five is five. Then the hundreds place seven times eight is 56. Put the six down, carry the five. And seven times one is seven plus five is 12. And we add the comma. It's very similar to the carrying that's done in addition. So just remember when you try these next problems, we start in the ones and multiply. We go to the tens, we go to the hundreds, and finally we go over to the thousands. Go ahead and try number one, two, and four on your board. If you finish early, do an estimate. Okay, let's see how we did on these. So the first one is 49 times seven. Who can walk us through this problem? Right, so nine times seven is 63, carry the six. Four times seven is 28, plus six is 34. Who can walk us through the second problem? 429 times six. Good, let's see how they did. So nine times six is 54. Put the four down, carry the five. Six times two is 12. 12 plus five is 17. Carry the one. Six and four is 24, plus one is 25. Add the comma. In the final one, we have 485 times eight. Go ahead and check your own. Five times eight is 40. Eight times eight is 64, plus four is 68. Eight times four is 32, plus six is 38. So here's what you're going to do today. Today, I will complete page 17P, remember these are in the back of our book, 18P, 19P, and 20P. You may skip any that multiply by a two digit. Skip any that multiply by a two digit number. So far we've done times one digit, and what we're gonna do is you're gonna head off and try all the times one digit first. We know if we finish early, you have some different choices. You may go on to the blend space. We know we're in unit five, and you're making smart choices on what type of activity you need more work on. Um, another choice is you may practice your math facts. So either of those things will work for today. Then halfway through our time, we'll come back together and we'll talk about how to extend this to two-digit work. 
and then you'll head off and finish those ones. So here's what those pages will look like. So they're in the back of the book, page 17P. So you can see that we have a two-digit one down here, here, and here. This one, it says 540, or 459 times 40. Even though 40 is a two-digit, we know how to do that. You're going to do 459 times 4, and then add on the zero. Here's your next page. So you have some numbers to fill in. Another page that looks very, very similar. And your last page. So you usually have a story problem up top. And again, skip any that multiplied by a two-digit number. Make it a great day.